What is going on, YouTube? Here we go again. A little bit more political on you. More trouble for Donald Trump. Criminal conspiracy. Criminal conspiracy. Which means... I don't know. Sounds to me like he might do some time. That's right, Donna. I've read through this 60 page of filing tonight. And here are the committee here, check this that out. believes that former President Trump and one of his lawyers may have engaged in a criminal conspiracy. Criminal conspiracy. Specifically, the committee says that it believes that Trump and others may have engaged in criminal or fraudulent acts, and they list a series of different crimes, including obstruction of an official proceeding. This is crazy. This is a guy who did not want to give up his office. To subvert the 2020 election. Now, Don, all of this comes out of a filing in a case where the committee is trying to obtain emails from conservative lawyer John Eastman. But they allowed this filing to really be the most extensive summary we've seen so this far. This committee is doing a great the job. They're digging we deep. They've been gathering evidence They're digging months. deep and getting all kinds of evidence. Of witnesses, but to what end? And here, they've really given us a window the most extensive so far into exactly what they found, what their conclusions are. Now, to be clear, no one has been charged. Not yet. I'm here. Congress clearly cannot charge anyone. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Is somebody going to take the step and actually to try to indict to a former president? Against former President Trump and others, depending on what they find in the rest of this investigation. One of the biggest headlines out of this committee so far. So you heard what, what that is crazy. What Paula had to say, Ellie, Commit, the committed committed criminal that acts. That Donald Trump committed a crime. I mean, this is a huge deal. What huge. happens now? Because the former president isn't charged, as Paula pointed out, isn't charged here, right? Not yet. Yeah, Don. So it's important to understand this is not an indictment. This is not a criminal charge. However, what it is is a roadmap for DOJ if DOJ cares to take this up, which they ought to. There's really two things going on in the narrow sense. The committee, Congress, is saying we get to get these emails involving John Eastman because they're not privileged. I mean, they're digging up dirt from every rock, finding things. As you heard earlier, Jared Kushner, his own son-in-law, is testifying on his own free will. I just don't understand how something that big, that many people involved on that rally... That he really didn't think that he was going to be implicated in some kind of some kind of crime. I mean, we're talking two people died that day. Which is great, Greg Jacob and John Eastman. Jacob dismisses Eastman's argument to stop the certification of Biden's win, saying, and I quote here, "And thanks to your BS, they write the word out bullshit. We are now under siege. Even the vice president's attorney is pointing the finger at Eastman." Yeah, so the theory here is that Eastman's... Yeah, the vice president that was actually being hunted down, being threatened to hang hang him, hang Mike Pence, they were saying. It's not just crazy or wrong legally, but it actually crossed the line over into fraud. And that email, the committee's using that to show everybody knew that there was no basis on which Mike Pence could reject... None whatsoever. ...that DOJ said Donald Trump had lost. Department of Homeland Security. Everybody said he lost. I mean, conspiracies were coming up all over from Trump camp. Vice President Mike Pence had absolutely no basis to do this. That's what would make this a criminal fraud. But however, Ellie, John Eastman is central to the effort to overturn the election. Overturn, huh? I mean, how, how can you overturn an election? Uh, more from the filing, it says... Just because you, accept, you can't accept that you've lost. ...that Mr. Trump and others may have engaged in criminal and or fraudulent acts and that plaintiff's legal assistance was used in furtherance of those activities. Do they have a convincing argument? Yes, they should. Well, they do in order to, to pierce the veil of attorney-client privilege, Don. So ordinarily, when an attorney and a client, in this case... John Eastman and Donald Trump are engaged in communications. Those communications ordinarily are privileged, meaning outsiders can't get those communications. They're secret. 
unless those communications relate to a potential fraud. And that's the argument the committee's making here. They're saying these communications between Trump and Eastman crossed the line. They had to do with the fraud of trying to steal this election, <laughs> trying to obstruct Congress. I mean, the technicality is on everything. It's just funny. That's the narrow argument. Technicality is on everything. But I think the broader point here is to up the political That is crazy. Do something. Ali Holmey, Paul Reed, thank you both. I appreciate it.